Today we look at why you need to find your purpose in life. This can single-handedly change your life for the better. This isn't just what you want or how to achieve a goal, but specifically why you're working towards it. And to help illustrate this, we use the example of the phenomenal Simon Sinek. If you have an interest in today's video, please consider checking out more content on the channel for more useful and practical inspiration to help you get more out of life. If you are new to the channel, please let me welcome you and invite you to subscribe for more content that will help enrich the quality of your life. Finally, if you feel anyone might find this video of interest, please consider sharing it with others as we aim to help people live the best life they can possibly live. Today's video is all about why you need to find your purpose in life and is the first of a two-part series I'm doing on the channel about purpose. This video is actually long overdue on the channel, but I'm really excited to create this, as this simple yet fundamental question is one of the most important questions all of us ask ourselves in our life at some point or another. To help us understand the importance of this better, I'm looking no further ahead than Simon Sinek. For those who don't know him, Simon's a best-selling author, motivational speaker and organisational consultant, and one of the foremost experts in the world today are in his field. His book, Start With Why, is a fantastic read which will help us make sense of the world around us, but helps us come to the realisation of why we take actions we do in life. Today's content is heavily inspired by his work and talks about understanding your why. So, with that said, let's start talking about why understanding your purpose is so fundamental. First and foremost, what is purpose? Purpose is the reason we do things or why they exist. Now note here, the key word in the definition is reason. You see, many mistake purpose with goals, a subject I've previously done a video about that I recommend watching if you haven't previously. There will be a link to that video in the description below. For example, when you ask someone about what their purpose is, they might answer, I want to be a millionaire. This is incredibly common, but in itself isn't a purpose, it's a goal. So what is a purpose? Well, it's to understand why you want to be a millionaire. Now, the answer to this might be to take holidays, be financially free, or provide for your family. And it's here you find your purpose. You should also be totally honest with yourself, and so if it's the case, say it's for status. While that's fine to begin with, I will be delving deeper as to why a purpose like that may need to be reconsidered at the end, so stay tuned to find out. You see, money isn't the main objective, it's understanding what's possible if you were to have money. And this is the most important point about purpose. It's not about what you want to achieve or do in life, but why you want to do it and why it's important to you. So let me use this channel and the content I create to help explain how to understand your purpose. First of all, I break this channel down into three distinct purposes. The first is self-growth. The second is to give value to my loved ones, and the third is to give value to the wider community. So how does this work? Well, to start with self-growth, my purpose is to grow and develop myself as an individual. Why? Because I believe that constant growth is fundamental to happiness in life, and I want to see what possibilities I have so that I can live my life without regret. This leads to the second purpose, which is to give value to my loved ones. The purpose, or why if you prefer, is quite simple here, which is that by improving myself, I can give more of myself to those I care about. I've said before in one of my videos, I want to pass on strong values to my son in his life, and I'm best placed to do this by learning and exploring myself to have a better understanding of life and all it has to offer. Finally, my third purpose is to give value to others. By doing this, by inspiring and helping others to achieve their purpose in their lives, I feel not only will this help people to truly achieve their potential, but as a result will make for a better and frankly happier world to live in. You see, when I talk about the purpose, I don't specifically talk about money or hitting a number of likes, comments, views or watch time or subs. 
because these are goals to try and help me fulfill my purpose, which in itself is an unreachable target. That doesn't mean I don't consider the goals. If I was to make a living on YouTube, I'd hit financial freedom to pursue my passion to spend more time on achieving my purpose. If I was to hit a certain number of views or watch time, I'd be more likely to be able to make money on YouTube to reach financial freedom. If I was to hit a certain number of subs, I'd be more likely to get views or watch time on my channel. And if I was to hit a number of likes or comments, I'd be more likely to get subs. You see, the goals are essentially the route towards my purpose, but that doesn't mean they are my purpose. And therefore, when defining your purpose, you have to understand why is possibly the most important question to ask yourself. Not what you want or how you will get it. These come afterwards. This little idea explains why some organizations and some leaders are able to inspire where others aren't. Let me define the terms really quickly. Every single person, every single organization on the planet knows what they do, 100%. Some know how they do it, whether you call it your differentiating value proposition or your proprietary process or your USP. But very, very few people or organizations know why they do what they do. And by why, I don't mean to make a profit. That's a result. It's always a result. By why, I mean what's your purpose? What's your cause? What's your belief? Why does your organization exist? Well, as a result, the way we think, the way we act, the way we communicate is from the outside in. It's obvious. We go from the clearest thing to the fuzziest thing. But the inspired leaders and the inspire or inspired organizations, regardless of their size, regardless of their industry, all think, act, and communicate from the inside out. So, towards the beginning of the video, I suggested that if your purpose is status in life, achieved by earning money, you may want to reconsider this purpose. Why? To put it simply, if your purpose is what might be considered selfish, you may not value or enjoy the destination. Let's take the money equals status example. If you have money and can buy a flash house and cars, that might be appealing at first, but can turn sour easily. You see, the first reason is that those who you think admire you don't value you for who you are, but value you for what you have. And as people, we're acutely aware of this, and it can lead us to extremely lonely places as we come to understand it. As you know, without money, people wouldn't show an interest in you. If you consider those who are wealthy and admired, it's often not so much their money that draws respect, but rather the value and what they give to others that is what draws attention. The next point as to why having a purpose of having status through wealth isn't recommended is people can sour extremely quickly. What might appear as admiration to begin with can quickly turn to envy. When this happens, relationships turn too. Finally, status through wealth is a form of vanity, which usually has insecurities behind it. Therefore, you might grow rich, but doing so become acutely aware there are people around you that are even richer, meaning you might sense a lack of satisfaction and seek a goal that is ultimately unfulfilling and hollow. Let me end with a personal story of someone I knew when I was younger. The person I speak of was two generations older than me, so of my grandfather's generation. The man was extremely successful in his life. He owned a successful business, had achieved financial security and comfort to say the least. He had a loving family and frankly had a life that many could only dream of. I hugely respected this man and unfortunately he's no longer with us but my admiration for him has never gone. However, it wasn't his wealth or achievements that I respected. In fact, during my youth, I never really even knew much about it. Where my admiration lay was in his behavior, how he treated others and what he gave to the community with his presence. His purpose wasn't about wealth or achievement, but rather how he made others feel. And to this day, I'll never forget that when I was a young man, he once visited my home. And as I sat there listening to him speak to my father, he called me over to sit next to him, as he wanted to tell me something and due to old age, wasn't able to speak up. So I sheepishly went over and sat next to him, a little nervous and a little embarrassed. As I sat there listening, his message was quite simple. As he told me to be a good person, be good to my parents, to my wife, and to all those I meet in life. Never lose sight of who I am or my values. This message struck me and has been with me ever since. 
You see, I'm not aware of this person speaking to others in this way. And while he was a good man, to me it seemed a little odd that he decided to share such wisdom with me. However, I feel blessed and it made me feel special. Even more so because that was the last time I saw him. As within a short period after that moment, he passed. Leaving behind a shocked and saddened community. For me, that moment defined purpose. Be good and make others feel special. With that, your legacy will be all the more meaningful. Again, the goal is not just to sell people who need what you have. The goal is to sell to people who believe what you believe. The goal is not just to hire people who need a job. It's to hire people who believe what you believe. I always say that you know, there's, uh, if you, if you, if you um, hire people just because they can do a job, they'll work for your money. But if you hire people who believe what you believe, they work for you with blood and sweat and tears. And nowhere, nowhere else is there a better example of this than with the Wright brothers. Most people don't know about Samuel Pierpont Langley. And back in the early 20th century, the pursuit of powered man flight was like the dot-com of the day. Everybody was trying it. And Samuel Pierpont Langley had what we assume to be the recipe for success. I mean, even now, you ask people, why did your product or why did your company fail? And people always give you the permu same permutation of the same three things undercapitalized, the wrong people, bad market conditions. It's always the same three things. So let's explore that. Samuel Pierpont Langley was given $50,000 by the War Department to figure out this flying machine. Money was no problem. He held a seat at Harvard and worked at the Smithsonian and was extremely well connected. He knew all the big minds of the day. He hired the best minds money could find, and the market conditions were fantastic. The New York Times followed him around everywhere, and everyone was rooting for Langley. And how come we've never heard of Samuel Pierpont Langley? A few hundred miles away in Dayton, Ohio, Orville and Wilbur Wright. They had none of what we consider to be the recipe for success. They had no money. They paid for their dream with the proceeds from their bicycle shop. Not a single person on the Wright brothers team had a college education, not even Orville or Wilbur. And the New York Times followed them around nowhere. The difference was Orville and Wilbur were driven by a cause, by a purpose, by a belief. They believed that if they could figure out this flying machine, it'll change the course of the world. Samuel Pierpont Langley was different. He wanted to be rich, and he wanted to be famous. He was in pursuit of the result. He was in pursuit of the riches. And lo and behold, look what happened. The people who believed in the Wright brothers' dream, worked with them with, for, with blood and sweat and tears. The others just worked for the paycheck. And they tell stories of how every time the Wright brothers went out, they would have to take five sets of parts because that's how many times they would crash before they came in for supper. And eventually, on December 17, 1903, the Wright brothers took flight. And no one was there to even experience it. We found out about it a few days later. And further proof that Langley was motivated by the wrong thing, the day the Wright brothers took flight, he quit. He could have said, that's an amazing discovery, guys, and I will improve upon your technology. But he didn't. He wasn't first. He didn't get rich. He didn't get famous. So he quit. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. And if you talk about what you believe, you will attract those who believe what you believe. So now I want to know. What do you consider your purpose in your life? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video as mentioned before, please consider sharing the video with others and subscribing for more content like this. And stay tuned for the next part next week.